Hey, hi, PS. How are you? Good afternoon. How are things? Hey, Abla. Good afternoon. I'm good. Good. Thank you. How are you? So, so glad to have this conversation with you, PS. I've had the privilege of having many conversations with you in the past, and I thought, uh, who better to speak about you know cloud-based contact centers than you? You are the star of the industry, so it's always good to connect with you. Thanks, thanks, Abla. It is my pleasure talking to you again. Sure, okay. sure. Thank you. Using me for this topic, it is my favorite topic. Thanks. Oh, lovely, lovely. So, please jump in right in. See, and as you're aware, uh, you know when we talk about ITES, right? This is one sector which has been traditionally known to go to office to do their work, right? When we talk about any agent, historically we've always seen them go to the office, you know, and they work. Now suddenly with the pandemic, the entire thing changed. A lot of us work from home, but then for a sector like yours, who has never had this opportunity to work from home, how challenging was this to turn around in a matter of days or maybe an hour or two? How? What was the experience for you? Thank you. The fantastic question, Aplak, like, and this was the one of the biggest challenges. And you are absolutely put it in right way. The question also hmm. because. Contact center as in a contact center industry, mm. all our clients never allow work from home. First of all, mm. and charity yes. banking, insurance, and healthcare clients never ever allow working from home. And so, majority of our population was always working from office, and we never had a setup so far uh, work from home. So, work from home was only for the executives who who frequently travels where there is no car. Uh, and end customer contact is there right so right. that is a different story altogether but uh, majority of the agent population never had so the biggest challenge was because of the pandemic we need to enable them to work from home overnight so that these challenges are varies from country to country but india specific if you ask me uh, infrastructure was a major challenge because majority of the employees like a shared environment are a shared infrastructure are in the in their houses, and it is a difficult for them to have a computer, uh, and also for us also sending a computer to them was a challenge, right. and uh, providing a internet is a challenge, and because none of our employees will not have any internet at home to connect. Oh, so this was a bigger challenge what we faced last year. So immediately, what we have done is two things. We worked with some of the logistics companies in India, and also with the service providers like Airtel, Tata, uh, Act, and all these people, yeah. and provided them dongles, provided them internet connections, and even some small UPS also at home because yeah. our agents will not have a power also at home. Power right. backup. Yeah. So yeah. the end customer call can disconnect during the. When power goes, so that is not a correct uh, way of connecting the people. So, we provided UPS, we provided dongles, and we provided computer. So, all this was a logistic nightmare to provide and enable right. work from work from. So, this was a major challenge. But within one week's time, what we have done is we were able to provide. We have twenty thousand employees in India. We were around eighty percent of the people started working from home. Within maximum one week's time, for all the out of twenty thousand, eighty percent of the population started working. Yes, uh, to this this uh, point, I have a question. See, a like you said, just enabling a workforce to work from home itself is a massive task. But we also know for a fact, and I'm not talking about only this sector. You during the last two and a half years. The number of security breaches have really multiplied. You know, the kind of security breaches we've seen is scary. Now, so considering environment like your uh, yours, where where like you said, you have twenty thousand employees, right, working out of the homes, the chances of them getting secure security breaches is very high. And when you work for your end customers, you know, we are talking about a lot of sensitive data. So I think you have two. Challenges to deal with: a, setting in the infrastructure to for them to work, and second, a continuous monitoring of security. How do you manage the second bit, Piyasa? So thank you, thanks, you, Aplak. So second question again, two parts, Aplak. One is uh, the behavior, 
and second is security controls and monitoring right so security enabling the security and monitoring is a very easy part as compared to managing a user behavior because right. Right. of our agent population what gen- what they generally do is when they are at home they use the same computer for social engineering so when the social engineering they do in their browsing social activities on the cloud on the net and majority of these threat actors do social engineering so right 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 so their user credential harvesting happens from there and the sniffing activities increased multifold during last right. week right right threat right. actors started attempting from there only and whatever security tools i implement and every day it is like a cyber war with the threat mm-hmm. actors in mm-hmm. monitoring and taking action immediately so we have we what we have done is we immediately uh, invested as an organization close to 8 million on a security tools in the last two years okay 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 and take a appropriate action at the right time right 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 simple, one simple example i can tell you for example as a pps ad i am supposed to log in from hyderabad right and i was supposed to work from 9 to 6 hmm. and if my activity happens from night 10 to morning 5 then immediately our security team will get an alert saying that this user generally is to work 9 to 6 but today is working 10 to 5 so can you please check with this user so that kind of alerting will come immediately and i was supposed to access some xyz applications but that particular day i have access to different applications all together mm-hmm. So immediately I will get an alert. So there is a lot of artificial intelligence also embedded into the security system. Correct. Definitely entire artificial intelligence including for example this particular user was always working from Hyderabad and today he is logging in from Malaysia. Right. right. So all kind of artificial intelligence in the security has been there and immediately our security team get an alert. and we will take action immediately so that is right. a critical part of the remote workforce uh, security is become right. in the last two years yeah yeah so please tell me one thing you know like i said and i'll i'll go back to the first question you know when we talk about infrastructure you said about the the hardware infrastructure that was required to set the ball rolling but you know as it as a industry you have invested millions and millions of dollars on contact center solutions right how do you at the most of them are on premise uh, and legacy uh, infrastructure how do you accommodate all these legacy based uh, context and solutions for a remote work uh, environment that we live in today how easy is it and is it possible at the first place yeah so aplak so thanks it is it is possible technically it is possible but okay. difficult but difficult <laughs> not impossible but difficult right yes. right 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 really the uh, legacy infrastructure is not built for the cloud enablement or remote workers connecting from the internet etc right right, right. taking calls through browser so that legacy infrastructure never had this kind of setup right right there are, right. There are work arounds where this providers like uh, cisco avaya all these providers enabled us Uh, genesis all these uh, partners who enabled us we use all we use genesis we use cisco we use avaya right so we use nice in contact so right all these partners we use so all these partners help us to enable and work arounds when remote workers connect to our environment for the system to have a work around technology where we install a soft phone on their uh, client on their right. desktop right 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 so it is a difficult but not very easy and not a right way of doing it but yes so so coming coming to your favorite area yes like i said not not difficult but not easy also like it it possible so so which gets us to the moot point which is the cloud based context center solution i know the merits of cloud based context centers and i think to all listeners many of them know but my fundamental question to you psr is Now let's understand. For instance, a company like yours, you have heavily invested in all these years legacy-based contact center solutions, right? They are on-premise legacy-based contact centers. What happens to your existing infrastructure? So tomorrow, for instance, to enable remote work, you see, 
there are benefits, clear cut benefits for to use cloud cloud based context and solutions. What do I do with existing solutions? Can I use both together in tandem? My question to you. Okay, definitely, I can't remove complete legacy on prem right. because we invested a lot. Right. So both will coexist. Okay. 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 And definitely, cloud based and on prem will coexist. Uh-huh. Two three reasons, if you ask me. One is for any seasonal ramps and any work from home environment because it is not a constant. This hybrid hybrid way of working is changing on a daily basis because today one town or one city will be lockdown happens. Right. Immediately I can go to cloud and enable them immediately. Right. And one country will go for lockdown. Hmm. Hmm. I can go to cloud and enable them immediately. Right. So that kind of flexibility will be there in the cloud contact center. That is the one one part of the story. And second part of the story is majority of the legacy systems are not equipped with the omni channel platform or a chatbot right. right. or a contact centers, all this not enabled. So right. what we do is we can use that cloud technology with the existing on-prem legacy systems and these mm-hmm. will coexist and work together. And for the voice platform, it will be on-prem. For any omni-channel platform, it can be on the cloud. So both will coexist. So at least for next few years, it will coexist. Perfect. Please, uh, I think you touched upon it, but can you uh, elaborate what are some of the key functions of our contact center which are actually suited for a cloud-based deployment? There are multiple functions in the, in the industry, right? Which would be, I mean, this, the idea of this program it's for your peer network to gain based on your experience, right? So what are some of the key functions of the contact center industry which you feel are best suited for a cloud environment? See, one is now this Gen Z or millennials. Hmm. They never uh, uh, love to talk to the people. They want right. everything to be on fingertips. Right, right. I think it can happen through any social media integration only. So they want contact center on their fingertips on their smartphone. Hmm. They can from any channel like from Instagram, they want to connect, Facebook, they want to connect mm-hmm. and they want to connect from LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever channel. So all these social integrations, omni channel, what I'm talking with the legacy systems is the challenge. So that has to be through cloud contact center. Okay. okay. Kind of cloud service providers are equipped with this kind of omni channel platforms mm-hmm. with the social integration, social media integrations. So it will right. become easy for us to implement those kind of things. But without that, nowadays, there is no contact center. Right, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, if, if, you're, if your audience that you're catering to, and be, mind, let me mind for both the stakeholders, be it the employees that work in the industry, and the customers whom you are servicing, both have a very big heavy mix of uh, Gen Z and millennials. But millennial and Gen Z's now. So, all my agent population is only millennial and Gen Z's. Right, right, I right. Maybe one year only Gen Z's, but now both millennials and Gen Z's. But going forward, Gen Z's. Right. So it will be yeah. And they don't want even that uh, legacy system kind of answering the taking the phone call. Even agent population also the same same thing. Right, right, right. So, please, uh, my last question for today is: like every technology you all you we can we've seen uh, in the past, there are challenges in implementation, you know, challenges in migrating. What are some of the challenges that you foresee or you have witnessed, you know, when you migrate certain functions into a cloud-based environment and some of the strategies to manage those challenges? So two, three things. One is in terms of the regulatory requirements. Hmm. First thing, regulatory requirements because each country has their own regulatory requirements. Right. Specifically, also we have our own regulatory requirements, and now SOT also coming into picture. There are a lot of regulations, so that is one thing which we need to take care of. And we are talking about these cloud contact centers. Mm-hmm. That is a, one of the biggest challenge. And the second thing is about the security, and so the third thing is about the who is the best service provider for us to migrate. Okay. okay, okay. And, and uh, now majority of these uh, contact center providers, legacy, earlier called the legacy systems, hmm. uh, everyone is talking about a subscription model only. No one is talking about a perpetual model license. Right, 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 right. I 
want to buy any license for the on prem system it has to be subscription model so instead of going that subscription model i will go with the cloud model only so the major challenge for the cloud for us to migrate is a legacy applications from our clients integrating with this cloud infrastructure right so application is not modernized and some right. of the are not cloud ready yet yes these are the integration challenges what we are going through as and today and yes last i mean i said this my last week but just out of curiosity uh cloud they say it's a pay per use model but considering a sector which is using you know certain functions on a daily basis how how does the roi really map up do you have you done these analysis and see how cloud based content solution actually map up to legacy based uh, solutions uh, from an roi perspective yeah very good question aplak <laughs> okay uh, in uh, simple terms it is like a owning a car and a renting a car right that right. is a quality what you get okay right Right. But definitely, the luxury what you get for the renting a car is you can rent any car. Right, right. One right. car you are going to have only one car. So right, right. the problem in terms of the ROI, if you ask me, see as on today, for some of the cloud solutions what I am using it, I am paying ninety eight dollars per user per month. Hmm. Whereas legacy systems will cost me twenty five dollars per uh, seat per month. Right, right. So friends if you over a period of even 6 years 7 years if i calculate roi still i can't match it with the exactly. and right. still this top service providers has to adjust their pricing i hope they are working on it yeah i mean do i think because it's a very important see like i said we are somewhere the idea of this this forum this discussion is to bring to light some important areas which need to be brought upon we understand the benefits of cloud But I think pricing is an area that needs to be looked upon. Pricing is definitely area of uh, concern because as on today, this cloud pricing is very not matching with my legacy systems. Right. And if you want more adoption for this uh, cloud contact center, the cost is a main one of the main drivers. Right. Right. Especially in the small contact centers, they can go to the cloud immediately because it is difficult for them to get a on-prem installation going right. live. All it will take some time. For the larger contact centers like us, we are around forty-seven thousand employees across the globe. So it, it is not very easy to go to cloud immediately because of the cost driver. Absolutely, absolutely. If, if they can talk about the cost, then definitely we adopt everything cloud. Perfect. Yes, thank you so much for your candid feedback. Always a pleasure speaking to you. Right. Thanks for today. Hopefully, we connect again soon. Yeah, Bye for today. You. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much, and uh, thanks for calling me for this uh, very. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.